Possession crucial from this. How much longer will the referee allow? Dublin lead by a point. Oh, and there's the whistle. It's over. It's over. We earned it by winning the last two matches on the road, and that's not going to be taken away from us. But what I love in Hurland, I love players that will never give in. He hits it. He hits it. Wow. It's over the bar. Welcome to the RTGA podcast for a pre-All-Ireland Hurling final special and we've lined up an illuminous cast of neutral voices. Well, nearly neutral, uh, ahead of what we hope will be a fitting contest on Sunday to round off a brilliant year for the small ball. Marty Marcy, welcome. Thank you very much, Roy. Delighted to be with you. Jackie Terrell, all is good, I hope. Yeah, great, Rory. Uh, it's the it's the most wonderful time of the year. It's not. It, it sure is. And and Brendan Cummins, how are things? Sure, all good, Jack. Tim Camper, okay for now. Rory O'Neill is my name. Sunday game production man for most of the week and podcast host when Mikey takes a well earned rest. And I think uh, everyone needs a rest. And I know this is hurling, but I presume just to digress ever so slightly, we all watched that game on Saturday night, lads. Did we? Dublin Mayo. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, sure yeah. Did, yeah. Oh, it was something Fantastic. else, wasn't it? Yeah, it really yeah, was. Yeah. I just want to make one point, right? And I know Brendan would be aware of this. And I look, I have no <laughs> allegiances one way or the other to Connor Lane. I don't know Connor Lane. I've never met the man. I've no, like, I've, 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 I've never met him from Adam. Don't know him from Boo, right? But I have the ref link and have access to the audio mic. And I'm sure, Brendan, you, you, we get it for the, the matches. Obviously, it's not recorded. Like, you would have had to have heard what was going on for the poor fella on Saturday. Like every five minutes, or every two or three minutes, Connor, 14 and three, fighting, yellow card. Connor, five and six, fighting, rolling on the ground, rough play, yellow card. Connor, behind you on the other corner, uh, two and six. Uh, this was going on constantly. And he was having to reverie the game at the same time. You know, it was very, very tough for the poor fella now. Yeah, we're probably getting into the into maybe and a conversation I thought would would happen is that we might be into the two refs situation again, um, oh. where, where like the Aussie rules and and I was surprised over the weekend that it it hadn't it hadn't blossomed out of it. Um, it is really difficult, especially when somebody's refereeing the dubs because the team that was going to beat them, the way the game meandered along for all the world and everyone was kind of half asleep in the first half when I'm playing around the back and it was like a soccer match. But then once it gathered momentum going downhill towards the finish line, it was just absolute chaos. And it is really difficult chaos. for the referees. And plus then you have a, a poor fella that's in, in hospital getting his jaw wired from uh, from a wallop as well. So it becomes extremely emo uh, emotive and um, it is really difficult for the ref. But I just think from a referee's point of view, you just start throwing out a few yellow cards early on mm. in these kind of matches, stamp your authority mm. on the game. We might see a bit of that on the weekend with mm. uh, with Fergal Horgan as well. Let's be honest, it's not going to be the pulling and dragging, but at the same time, he will try to stamp his authority as a referee on the game and it'll be interesting to see how he does that and uses the experience in that situation. Well, it's very interesting you say that, Brendan, because I obviously had the ref link as well for the Cork Kilkenny game and um, within the first couple of minutes, there was a bit of pulling and dragging and I'm not saying this obviously with my Cork hat on. Well, I am, Jackie, all right? <laughs> right, okay. But there was like, yeah. but but he spotted it yeah. instantly. He, he mm. spotted Hugh Lawler and on the second <laughs> pull, of Patrick Horgan, he he went into Hugh and he said, "The next time you're going in the book, I saw you." And he started doing this with his hands to say, "You, that's how far you were pulling his jersey." And the next time you're going, and it just stopped, it just stopped mm -hmm. immediately. Like the the man has great authority now, and I think it was a really good appointment again for this final. Would we agree? Oh, I, I think it's a, it's great an appointment, and, and as a player. You read the ref in the first five, ten minutes and you know what you can and can't get away with. And Fergal Horgan that day, you knew Hugh Lawler as a defender or any defender looking out going, I'm not going to get away with a whole lot today and I need to be, you know, right on the money with my tackles, my timing and that kind of thing. So players do read referees and uh, I thought he was outstanding that day and I'd expect him to be just as good this weekend because there's no doubt about it, he's the best hurling referee at the minute. Um, and I suppose maybe for Conor Lane in the football, there was so much going on. Mm. It kind of reminded me of 2012 when we played Tipperary. There was so much going on all over the field that day that it, you just you have two eyes and if yeah. there's five or six instances going on, you can't see them all and be able to read them all and deal with them all, you know. And sometimes games like that, when there's that familiarity and obviously Dublin and Mayo know each other so well, 
there's history, there's, uh, you know, there's agendas from years gone by. Um, you know, and probably from, from a Cork and Limerick point of view, they don't know each other a whole lot. They haven't met in an All-Ireland yet. They played in, 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 a, in, a, in, a, in a, an All-Ireland semi-final a few years, but there's not that familiarity that existed the weekend between Dublin and Mayo. Mm. Um, just before we get into the match, just very briefly, Marty, um, obviously big news there during the week, Liam Sheedy stepping down. It was, would it have been on the cards? I mean, he was at the end of a three-year term, uh, won in All-Ireland in his first year on this tour, on this, on, on, in this managerial reign, won it in his last year uh, on the previous. And like overall, I would imagine it would be considered a success, but the right decision from Liam, do you believe? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I was down with Brendan. Brendan did a news piece with me, and we had a chat about it. And it, it was kind of, it was in the, it was in the ether. It was in the air, and it was depending on whether what was Liam's own attitude, because, uh, you know, he's done it. He's been to the mountain top twice, so he's nothing to prove, nothing. and he owes nothing to Tipperary, in my humble opinion. Um, so it it just depended on what he wanted to do, uh, and clearly, I think he feels that he's done as much as he can. Um, and I, I think it'll be interesting to see what will happen uh, because there are several candidates, some inside the county, uh, mm. some outside the county, some that are on our podcast at the moment, may I suggest? <laughs> Jackie will never, I tell you, Matthew, <laughs> Matthew, 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 Oh, Brenda, Brenda, <laughs> now be fair to Jackie. Jackie is only just out to get out of bed, as you can see there in the background. You know? So you'd want to be up early, Jackie. Could you, you imagine? Early, could you imagine Jackie Terrell, manager of the Tipperary hurling team? That would be some crack now. And I three selectors, and, and three selectors from Kilkenny as well. <laughs> Tommy Welsh, JJ Lane. <laughs> you would finish him off from the inside. <laughs> But uh, but uh, yeah, would you agree though with Marty Brendan that you do think it was maybe a good decision in the end from um, from Liam's perspective? Yeah, well, you think where Tipperary was when Liam took over. Um, I think we hadn't made it out of the out of the round robin. There was a little bit of chaos around the around the whole around the whole thing. We knew we had a generation of players that had just simply underperformed for a year, and he was the exact fit to make it right, and he did, you know. And I think the scenes in the Wexford game. When he was got up and down the line and Tibray got over that. Then, of course, we had the Kilkenny game. When you put the old enemy to the sword like we did that day. Then after that, of course, everyone was expecting a small bit of a rebuild. But Liam went with the existing players because he would have always said, I have a, I have a one-year plan because he understood in management like that you have to win this year's All-Ireland. And that's just the way it is. So, yeah, I mean, the, the commitment and he's changed a role. He's with Tenio now and all. So, I mean, he doesn't owe Tipperary absolutely anything. I mean, the man is just uh, an absolute legend. I think his only way we're going to get the concrete for the statue is the, is the next question, to be honest with you. He's done so much for Tipperary. He puts a backroom team together like no other. And uh, so no, he'll be fine in his retirement forever long. That will, that will last. But he de- certainly did a fantastic job for Tip. Now, obviously, all eyes now look at uh, who, who the replacement is going to be. Mm. Realistically, yeah. realistically, you'd have to say that Liam Cahill must be a, a, a strong contender because yeah. there would be an argument uh, within, I think, Tipperary that Liam Cahill was unlucky not to get it the last time. Mm. But he's done quite a great, quite a good job with Waterford. So whether he, Liam will want to go back, remember he won under 20 All-Irelands. Uh, so there's a, there's a group of players coming through. He may want to go back in and finish the job that he, uh, I would imagine, deserved because I think he went to Waterford on the base. He wanted a bit of senior inter-county experience. Now he's done that, brought him to an All-Ireland final uh, and he may well. But I, So I think Liam Cahill's decision will reverberate and we'll see where, where things happen. Yeah, and I, and I think on that as well, Marty, the, the, the Liam Cahill decision will have to come quickly because you remember um, he's with Waterford who were in the last two, they were in the All-Ireland final and the All-Ireland semi-final. So they have a, a, a bar now set as to what the expectations are. So mm. they will want clarity very quickly because you see at the moment, like you look at Wexford, not too sure who the manager will be. God knows what's going to happen in Galway. The last thing you want to be as a county board chairman is the last out there looking for a manager. So mm. Watford will be expecting a decision quickly, I would expect. To Braille will be expecting to appoint quickly as well because like if you have to go looking for somebody, it takes a while now. It's not something you can do overnight. So... In fairness, I think in the coming week or week and a half or so, it should tell us an awful lot as to as to where Liam Cahill stands. And there won't be any change in Kilkenny, Jackie. I wouldn't imagine so, Rory. Um, 
and you know Brian will sit back and reflect that Northside is is very quiet at the minute. There's not a whole lot of chat. Um, you know the the, the realization around Kilkenny is that Brian is getting the maximum of this team, and that's exactly where they are at the minute. Um, and I would expect Brian to sit back and 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 be be ratified within the coming months, and obviously he'll probably scour the the, the 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 county for talent and see who can he pull through. That is what we need. We need fresh talent coming through. Obviously, uh, TJ is pushing on in years. There's a few other guys as well. Connor Fordy and Killian Buckley, you know, the years are pushing on. So we need to start looking at guys that we can bring to replace these guys because when they go, they will leave, leave a big void. But you know, I, I expect things to stay as is. Uh, for, for, for this year and for Kilkenny So let's look ahead to Sunday Marty you've been out obviously filming for the last two weeks mm. in both counties and, and visiting both camps what's, what's the feeling on the ground? Well the feeling I'm getting right across the hurling world is that uh, Limerick it's Limerick's to lose uh, Limerick keep, keep, saying, keep saying that, keep saying that Marty <laughs> <laughs> You send me a fiver to say that Rory so I'm saying um I think that, you know, things will have to go well for Cork. Mm. These are the kind of phrases I'm hearing. And Limerick would have to have a bad day. That They haven't had really a bad day. Maybe the first half against Tipperary in the Munster final. So, yeah, I mean, Limerick would be, hot, would be the hottest of favourites, I would, yeah. uh, would have thought. But I think Cork will have gained an awful lot of momentum from the three games. Uh, and talking to Patrick Horgan and um, Kieran Kingston, the, the, the Clare game was significant because... They felt that Clare were coming. Clare had had games. They achieved, they, they, they marked Tony Kelly. Young players, Jack O'Connor, scored goals. And then that, that mo- that they got their mojo. And I, above all else, and this is the important thing, they won in Croke Park. Because they haven't won in Croke Park in a long, long time. Mm. And they beat Kilkenny. 2013 so, semi-final. I think the 2013 semi-final was the last yes, victory there. Yes, against Dublin. Yeah. And that was the day that Ryan O'Dwyer was sent off. Dale mm. was in charge. Uh, etc etc and basically they feel that they have they're, they're on their way which i do believe that they are whether it is that's all enough for them to achieve success against a limerick team that's going for back to back all islands and has the physical strength i do not know but i think knowing cork and as, as they say and you know it because you're a corkman this is cork by this mm. is cork they, they won't and, be they won't be lacking belief no they won't and uh, they might be outsiders but I give them a fair chance if they just mm. hurl with abandonment, almost with a plan, with a strategy, but from the soul and from the heart. There's a great novelty uh, feeling to the final in a lot of ways, Jackie, in that, you know, it's a very first meeting between Cork and Limerick in a final. Um, it's, a, it's an all Munster uh, pairing once again. But would it be fair to say you would have picked Limerick at the beginning of the year to make it? Would you have picked Cork to make it? Yeah, Rory, it's definitely fresh and new and, and there's something really nice and tangible about that because, you know, you're trying to think of history and all that and there is none. It's 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 a new script. It's a fresh page. Yeah, you would have picked Limerick. I wouldn't have picked Cork to be in an all Ireland final. No way, but a final, yeah, maybe on a good day they might push to get to a semi-final. But it's only when Marty's talking and you hear the building blocks that they have in place, like how big it was to be Clare, to hold Tony Kelly, to get back to Crow Park and then to win and to beat Kilkenny there. You know, it, it's con- it's really convincing stuff. And the thing about it is, is this isn't an old aging team with history, with scars of, of bad defeats before. A lot of new fresh blood in there that haven't been to Crow Park before, that haven't really, you know, had bad days there. So, like, there is that, you know, there's no fear, as, as Marty said. And I think, like, it, it, I know it's a bit of a laugh and, and this is Cork by, but Cork come with a swagger. Cork, Cork always come with a confidence that they can beat anyone. It doesn't matter about the last day. So I'm not going for this Cork team. There really is. I would not have had it in a, in a final. And it's it's definitely maybe a year or two sooner than I ever thought that I would have been. And there's some momentum back on the background of the 20s and the minors and things like that. It's 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 a, it's a convincing story. And, and Kieran Kingston back there, don't forget the good job that him and Dermot O'Sullivan have done previously with, with, with this team. And now they're building on that again and it brought them to another level. Uh, good. It, like interesting that Marty references and it's something that had probably came out of the camp, Brendan, in relation to incremental improvements from the very first day against Limerick, who they now face again. We'll stick with Cork, obviously, just for a, a little bit. Um, 
would you have seen the same? Would you have seen incremental improvements game on game from first day out against Limerick? You know, like I suppose the two killer goals before half time, maybe, you know, kind of kept the game at arm's length from there on in. Last by eight in the end, Limerick kind of felt they were pulling up. But did they, re- did they improve game on game after that, in your view? I think they did. And I think what Cork really wanted all along was to get a win. I mean, um, it's one thing having the swagger, but you need to build it on something more than just we've won all Irons in the past. And this group of players with the backroom team, the stellar backroom team that Cork have, to be fair, it was only going to take a win. The management would have believed totally in the players, but for a player to get their mojo or to feel that they're invincible, they need to get a couple of wins under their belt. And I agree with Marty, that Clare game was absolutely massive. Like even in the last throw of the dice when Tony Kelly had the shot and Collins brought off the save, when you're sitting in a dressing room after the game, you think to yourself, well, we could be out of the championship, but we're not. So it's a little bit written in the stars. The manager would come in and say, the process is working. We're going really well. I told you, if all things are equal, we'll get a bit of luck and we'll get across the line. And then, of course, they won in Crow Park. But another big part of what Cork have is Tim O'Mahon. He's bombing up the field. Jeremy Mellerick will be a huge loss for the final now. Down he's gone in full back. Jack O'Connor is like that striker you play on different centre halves to test him. And eventually he finds a weak spot like he did on Delaney the last day. And he just absolutely speeds past him, you know. So they have the players that will disturb the force, we'll call it, that is Limerick. They'll just rotate them around. They have the bench, Dalton came on the last day. And I think, if you think back to last year's Munster final, when Watford got down the home straight with Limerick, Galway got down the home straight with Limerick. They didn't really believe that they could finish the job. If Cork can get down the home straight with Limerick, they will totally believe that they're going to be our Ireland champions. And that's something this Limerick team hasn't come up against. Even Tipperary, when Tip went nine points up in the Munster final, you always kind of got a bit of a sense that, well, you know, maybe they'll come back or maybe they'll do this. And of course, we all proved ourselves right when they, when they d- did a demolition job in the second half. Cork won't have any of that going on now. They have freshness, they have legs, they have wins under their, their belt, which creates belief. Uh, you know, Limerick have beaten Cork twice, Rory, this year, <clears throat> both of them by eight points. Yeah. And I was, I saw both games. I was at the league game. And you just sense that Cork were trying to learn about themselves. I think, I don't think they were ready to beat Limerick then. I think by losing twice, they actually have a psychological advantage up here because Limerick have to say, well, should we beat them before? No matter how mm. good John Kiley is, there is a danger that they just might be aware that Cork, well, we can beat them. Where Cork, I think, have found their mojo. They have found good forwards. As uh, Brendan says, they've got Tim O'Mahony doing what Kyle Hayes is more kind of trying to do. They're, they're adopting a diagonal ball. If the right half back, it goes over to the left half forward position. So they're very similar in some ways in terms of what they're trying to do. But I think that the Cork team that played Limerick earlier is now different to the team that will line out on Sunday. Interesting. Um Let's shift to Limerick for a second. Jackie, are they, are they reaching the peak of their powers right now? Well, Rory, if they didn't reach the peak of their powers in Tipperary in the second half of the semi mm. the final, it's a scary, scary hurling world mm. up against them. Um, I think they're there. They're probably not consistently nailing it, but they're going very close to it. And I just get this sense with Limerick, they have a plan. It, they have a clear style of play, and that's their plan A and their plan B to do plan A even better. Um, and I just feel they they remind us a small bit me of, of the Kilkenny team when yeah. we the peak of our powers. That yeah, of course they 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 they're respectful to their opponents. They look at them. They see what they do well. But essentially, it's about them. And if they get the right level of performance as regards attitude, work rate, and, and, and their hurling is just instinctive that they feel they will beat anyone on any day of the week and probably twice on a Sunday if that needs to be the case. They just have this ingrained confidence from winning three Munsters in a row, winning their leagues, winning the two All-Irelands. And I just feel that they just have this sense about them. Lads, if we come to the party and we bring everything that we're about, the physicality, the strength, the speed, the deep running, the diagonal balls, that we will beat anyone. And of course, they'll tweak little bits and bobs, but they won't change their game mm. Even there, and you see the consistency of their 15 that they're picking this year. Mm. 
couple of games. They just have landed on the sweet spot where they know exactly what they're about, where everyone's role within 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 the within within the team and the panel, um, and where teams will will tweak from game to game. Limerick are pretty consistent in their approach and they've landed on this really consistent performance and from times when they hit fifth gear, nobody can live with them. I mean, Jackie made mention there, uh, Marty, about the consistency of team selection. It'll be the same 15 again, won't it? Like, well, like they haven't yeah. really changed a huge amount. I was looking at the team that they picked that that played against Cork in the 2018 semi-final, that famous final when Cork were six up with a few minutes to go. And I think Mike Casey and Graham Mulcahy um, were the only two. And the 13 of the 15 are still being... Now, like, they were... They, I mean, they're, they're, their average age is still, I think, very, very young. So we we won't be seeing any major rabbits out of the hat. I mean, they're just going to go with, you know, the tried and trusted, really, ahead of which, Sunday, aren't they? Which, from a, from a very selfish point of view, is wonderful, from my point of view. Yeah, because yeah, you, you know... Yeah, these yeah, yeah. You're doing notes at yeah. 25 past three. What colour helmet, I mean, uh, helmet is he wearing again? Yeah. <laughs> Rory, is it, a, is it the Cork team for us or the Limerick team? <laughs> yeah. the yeah. uh, so there's, and then we, we try to pretend on air that we're very calm and collected yeah. and we know what we're doing. I think the only change that Limerick have uh, that kind of surprised us, but then if you're from Limerick, you'll know that it wasn't really a surprise. That's when I think it was, uh, was it Mike Casey got um, injured or Richie uh, English and Dan Morrissey moved from yeah. left half back to full back and Kyle yeah. Hayes. But Kyle Hayes had played his underage uh, in the half back line, although we only saw him up at the full forward line. But they're 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 a stable outfit. I mean, there was quite clearly there was a debate at one stage: would Keen Lynch play midfield? Would that squeeze out Dara Donovan or Willie Donahue? Willie Donahue had played so well uh, in training uh, and given a commitment and in performances in league and championship that he had to be accommodated. It was actually who would who would stand beside William Donahue? Would it be Dara Donovan or Keane Lynch? But that conundrum has now been sorted out. So, I, I mean, we could stay now. We're, we're doing this podcast, uh, what is it, Tuesday, and we can say with almost certainty, and now that Peter Casey got cleared as well, that it will be the 15 that we saw in the semifinal. I can't see any changes whatsoever. And the right decisions on that, Peter Casey, the right decision to uh, clear him and allow him play in the, ma- in the match, Brendan, do you think? Yeah, I think so. It's 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 a difficult one because I know Jackie was talking about it on the on the live feed at the time that it was uh, <coughs> a headbutt and all that. But I think the way he was provoked, I think probably swung it a bit in his favour in that it, it wasn't highlighted as much the little jab that he got from um, Conor Gleeson, which caused the reaction. And I think all factors taken into account, I think yeah, it's it's okay for for Peter Casey to play in All Ireland final. I remember in our setup in two thousand and one when Brian O'Mara missed out. And you'd leave him done to his credit coming in to a meeting saying, lads, look, I provoked him. Like I hit him the shot first, you know, don't let him lose out in an all Ireland final. So when you had the two guys who had actually had the scuffle and one of them backing up the other to let him play, it was, it was heartbreaking that and day. They, I'll they, never they, forget they, it in 2001. And did they still, they, they still banned him from playing the game, even though Liam Dunn went in? Yeah, Dunn, in fairness to him, had said like that, look, geez, let the man play the All-Ireland final because, you know, there, there's, there is that honour involved in it. And Jackie will, you know, and Kenny and Tipperay, we kill each other and all that. But, you know, at the end of the day, you want the other player to um, to, to play in the final. So mm-hmm. my memory from that was that Wexel were a full square on saying, look, just let the man play the final, to be fair, you know. But unfortunately, when he sat in that boardroom, the, the lads down the other end of the table said, no, Tom's down like the like the arenas, and, and that was it. But I remember Brian around it around that game. It was really difficult. Like, he was there, and he, he finished his tracksuit, and we all looked at him going, geez, he should be playing, you know. And um, he did everything he could, and he was fantastic to the group. But you can see the hurt in a player in the build-up to a match when you know that they're going to miss out, like, and that's that's the way it was. So, thankfully, Peter Casey is in that situation. And I, and, and I know it shouldn't be a factor, because John Kiley said it post-match in an interview with us. Um, that you know, Peter Casey is not that type of character, mm. uh, and I would imagine that his CV and his reputation helped him. I know you have to deal with the facts, but as Brendan said, you don't want anybody losing out in a Ireland final. But uh, but Peter Casey is is a fine hurler, and I've never seen him indulge in anything uh, that was. We also, Marty, I'd, I'd have to say, right? We we can't lose sight either of Limerick playing on the edge. Now, we had Aaron Gillan, Garrod Hegarty's been a few scuffles last year. Tom Morrissey's been a few scuffles. So Limerick have been well warned 
and gotten away with a few now yeah. over the last 18 months. So taking off the, the Limerick tinted glasses for a second, you know, and looking at it coldly, they have been really on the edge. And I think Fergal Horgan, if one of them decides that they're going to continue to play on the edge, Fergal Horgan will be fairly fast about giving a yellow and a second yellow to make sure that this is played in the in the spirit it's supposed to. And uh, so Limerick were warned. And that was the only thing in the build-up to the Peter Casey one. I was thinking, I don't think he's going to get off because they've had yeah, a number of scuffles. Uh, yeah. But he has, fortunately for him, and look, as human beings' point of view, we're, we're glad to see yeah. that he hasn't missed out in the final. I, and I, 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 and from a purely personal perspective, I thought it was great that the freedom up to play in the game because I think Jackie and, if, and our panel at the time said it was a lunge forward with the head and it was a red card. And I think that's actually a perfectly reasonable assessment to make. But you, you don't need to miss the All Ireland final because of that. You, you know, like the two aren't mutually exclusive. Like in some certain situations, in certain circumstances, the sending off is punishment enough. And I think what Marty's point on the mitigating circumstances around his fantastic track record, potential provocation, and um, and whether or not um, the, the correct procedure was followed. No, I find that, that part of it a little bit a little bit murky, but I don't necessarily think it's mutually exclusive to say, look, he deserved to be sent off, Jackie. But at the same time, I don't think he should miss the final. Would would that be fair? Yeah, I suppose that's a fair comment. And and I suppose it probably was looked at the bigger, the whole picture, which is the right way. The camera angle on one of the angles probably wasn't totally conclusive. Another one didn't he didn't look it didn't look great for him. The fact mm-hmm. The referee went on the guidance of, I think, either umpire or umpire. the it wasn't directing umpire, yeah. him. Yeah. And if it was, they were at least, well, the linesman was probably 30, 40 yards away. Umpire could have been 60, 70. So if all those mitigating factors were were, were brought to the table, which it looks like it were, was, there probably was a case for him. Uh, my point was that if the head goes forward and you could you could lip read the mm. headbutt red card, that you are in trouble. But thanks, look, thanks be to God, he is available to play and has been at least. And look, he isn't a dirty player. I don't I don't even remember him having a foul before. So it probably it is totally out of character. Um, and thanks be to God, it's not going to be a thing where we're going to be talking about after the All-Ireland. He is available to play. He will yes. start. The Limerick team will probably be fairly straightforward. I suppose from the Cork thing is, what are they going to do with Shane Kingston? You know, yeah. a real left of field thing is could they start Alan Cadigan he did so well when he came in the last day and maybe hold Shane Horgan back uh, will they start Shane, Shane, Shane Barrett again probably not so there's probably you know Marty will probably be scribbling a few notes at 20 <laughs> Cork team she alright mm. speaking of matchups and I think like the more difficult matchups I suppose and the more difficult puzzles to solve probably come from the Cork side so do we see Mark Coleman and Keen Lynch, for instance, pairing off. Brendan? I'm not sure if Mark Coleman's a man marker. It's the big conundrum and what would have kept Kieran Kingston, the backroom team up, I suppose, in the coming the coming nights is what you do with him. Jeremy Ellick would have been the absolute ideal because you're playing with a, a sweeper for all the world. You can go man to man around the pitch and you'll be fine. You still have the cover behind you. Um, I don't know what to do with, to be honest with you, Keane Lynch. I think what they might do is they, they might try to get one of the midfielders to sit back and pick him up when he comes into his zone and just make sure you're, you're shadowing him because when you are playing with that sweeper back there, you are going to try to have an extra man out around the middle third of the pitch. But it's very, very hard with Keane Lynch because remember, normally you'd say, Ash, sure, look, if you put a man marker on him, they won't give him the ball. But you watch every line ball Limerick have the weekend. There'll be two lads on Keane Lynch's back and they'll give him the ball. Why? Because they want to create an overlap. I think if you're Cork, the main thing you have to do is go man for man around the pitch. Do not double up on any one of them because you're given an overlap. And once you give that overlap, then the racehorses gallop up along the wings Mm. and then you're in big bother. So a bit like what Limerick will be trying to do with Cork is just follow the runner. Don't engage with the man with the ball. Make sure there's no overlap. That's going to be, for me, the fascinating part of this game is to watch the lad running with the ball and everyone else staying in their man to, to see what, to make sure that no one gets that, that, that overlap, which causes chaos with the way both teams play. And like the hurler of the year, I suppose, and he's kind of picked up where he left off and he's such a massive problem, I think, for lots of opposition teams, Marty, is Garrod Hagerty. Who do you see pairing off with him? 
Well, it's an interesting uh, dilemma, I think, for Cobb because it, it would look like Owen Cadigan mm. would probably be playing back. And at the end of the day, Owen is 31, 32. Uh, a big, tall lad, experience. He's on the very... So he's a bit more than 31 more, or 32, he's, 30, he's, he's, heading, four, he's, heading, he's heading for 35, Marty. Is he? Yeah. He told yeah, me 31. Yeah. But he's lying. Like, <laughs> 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 but then I tell everybody I'm 24. Nobody believes me. <laughs> so it's going to be difficult for Owen to go on Ger Hegarty. I think that Tim mm-hmm. O'Mahony probably would be earmarked. I think they have a problem... Uh, you know, Robert Downey has been outstanding. His clash with James Flanagan will be very interesting. Um, but I think Robert Downey has done really well at fullback. But there is a problem in the halfback line. And as Brendan says, it's hard to know what to do with Keen Lynch. So I would think Tim O'Mahony will, will take Gerard Hegarty because the puck out strategy from Nicky Quaid is always to bombard, aerial bombardment on top of Ger Hegarty. And Tim O'Mahony will be, I would think, earmarked to try and at least break it away from him as much as possible. But I still don't know that would mean you play Owen Cadigan on the other wing. I think Mark Coleman shouldn't be marking Keen Lynch. We saw that plan didn't work uh, when they met in, in the Gaelic Girls. That was, that was kind of, I think, the plan. I think, as, as Brendan says, he's not a, a man marker. I think he's more of a natural fluid hurler. So the, I think who's going to mark Keen Lynch? I don't actually have right answer. I don't have an answer yeah, right now. It's difficult honest. And like, then again, like, and that's that this is probably why I think Limerick are justifiable favorites the problems and the puzzles that they pose for cork are so there's so many more from uh, cork side to figure out than there is from limerick i would suggest and like galan inside as an inside as an inside back jackie what kind of problems does he pose for a defender like what kind of challenge does he pose for like how, how difficult is he to tie down and what is it that makes him so good at what he does it's as you touch it, it's the questions he'll ask you. Like you would normally mark corner forward and inside forward, and you like you get in front of him, and like you're probably going to, you know, you're probably going to put the shackles on him. But the thing about him is, you get in front of him, and those limit halfbacks are so good, you can hit a high ball. And I, as a cornerback, the worst place to be is out in front of a, of, a, of an inside forward who's brilliant in the air like Aaron Galan is, and the high ball is coming in because if he catches that behind you. You're either pulling him down and you're going for a break for 10 minutes or else he's in on goal. And he he, he, he asks those questions all the time. He delays his runs. He, le- he leaves lovely pockets of space. And his first touch is impeccable. Like him running out to a ball, you know he's going to he's, his first touch and he can swing the ball over the shoulder. There's just so many questions that, that, that he asks you, Rory. Mm. I will say one thing is probably the form cornerback of this year is Sean O'Donoghue. Mm. He has pace. He's strong in the air. He's very good on the ground. Uh, you see the job he done on Owen Cody. He's been hugely consistent from a cornerback that has been inconsistent up to up to this point. So they have a good man marker in there. I'd imagine Niall O'Leary will pick up um, Peter Casey. Um, but I wouldn't be as concerned about Tom Morrissey and Garrod Hagerty. And, and I could be eat me words on it. But if you do remember the Munster Championship this year, where Cork sent Owen Cadigan and Tim O'Mahony after the two of them and pressed them high up to the field and got in their face and were aggressive and just batted the ball away from them. And they, they limited how effective they were. Yes, the Keen Lynch conundrum is a, is a tricky one. But I wouldn't be as concerned about Garrod Hagerty and Tom Morrissey. And now look, they're, they, they have caused the most trouble for any team going forward. But Cork <coughs> has enough tools there to deal with the two of them. What to do with Keen Lynch, well, you know, that's, that's another day's conversation. I, I, I think, I don't know whether the lads would agree with me or not, but I think Cork need to keep the Limerick half back line quiet. They need to stop them going forward as much as possible because I think everything comes from Dermot Burns, Declan Hannon, and Kyle Hayes. And I think if they, I think that would be a bigger concern almost. If they can stop that uh, and that momentum going forward, then the Keen Lynch thing mightn't be as big a problem, if you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think. Me? Yeah, there's there's no doubt. I think that if if uh, O'Connor goes on, dear with Burns, the way Cork play, and Rory, you had it up in your social media feed, like the ball never hit the ground after Jack O'Connor put it in past Owen Murphy up the other end with the tic tac use of the ball. It's like, the first time- I, yeah, sorry, Brendan. Like, I, 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 now the thing about it for me is Cork look to me like they're playing almost. Do you remember Sabutio? Mm. Yeah, right. They're playing kind of a Sabutio hurling, right, and. It's, that's fine. It looks gorgeous and it's beautiful to watch. 
but it's delicate. And Limerick are the crusher of dreams, as we know at the minute, right? And I'm just wondering, will you get away with that type of intricate play against a team like Limerick? Well, the, the whole key is really for me is to get the ball in front of O'Connor on Burns and turn him and see can you run him the other direction. I think that's what it's going to be. You have no business doing it with Kyle Hayes. If you can get him on Declan Hannon coming down the middle, fine as well. But I think it's down that wing that you can use your legs down that will say that with Burns and Hannon channel there. And I think that's where Cork will try to run it because if they can get Limerick half back line out the pitch like Kilkenny were inside Patrick Horgan isn't burned with unbelievable pace but when it goes in it sticks and if he can get one on one inside with Dan Morrissey and then he gets it to, to hold it and gets him like he did with Hugh Lawler you know then suddenly he's the one putting the ball over the bar over his shoulder rather than Aaron, Aaron Gillan and it might cause the Limerick half back line to come back towards their own goals a bit more which frees up space in the middle so it's like that like more chest than even Sabutio is what they're going to have to try to do and inside in the middle of the warfare that's going to be going on to watch the brains work and trying to figure out the puzzle is going to be amazing as well especially with the legs both teams have because they will not slow down from start to, from start to finish and a big part of that puzzle, Brendan, is going to be and a key component in the key to unlocking the puzzle is going to be your puck out strategy. What way do you see that playing out for both? Well, I think the, the ideal for, for, for Cork would be to get it to five or seven or even get it to Coleman. Uh, I don't think they want to go through the full back line because that's what Limerick will want them to do. They'll, they'll show them actually Limerick have, forward line, have full forward line I expect will stand on the Cork 45 and say go on hit it to my area. And I think that's what's going to happen early on to try to get them to run it. Um, but if they, can, if they do go along Harnady seems to have been the one that's winning, winning the puck outs. But Cork remind me a bit when Kingston was there first they played Tiberi and Turles. They have a clear strategy of creating green patches of grass for the ball to drop into. Mm. So the forwards are running constantly. So it'll be interesting to see as well would Limerick follow him. Will Kyle Hayes end up on the other wing following his man or Hannon on the other? I don't think that'll be the case. I think they'll try to hold and play zonal and then Cork will try to pick holes in and out between them. So there is an opportunity for Cork, I think, on their own puck out because I don't see Limerick following Cork forwards all around the pitch. Um, so that means then they know what will happen. So they're able to plan for it a little bit better. And do you think from a Limerick perspective, Jackie, that it'll be a case of mixing it up, go short when the option is there, go long when they need to? Yeah, I, I think the variety is, is the spice of life for Limerick, really. As I keep going, allude that they won't change a huge amount. What has been they've been doing has been working. They have Garrod Hagerty, they have Keen Lynch, they have Tom Morris, who are well able to win ball in the air, and Scrafford on the ground. They have the enforcer in William O'Donoghue who will plough lads out in that middle third and wanting Cork Arndt in the middle third is physical and strong. <clears throat> so Will O'Donoghue will be so key to it there and probably the best midfielder in the country. And, you know, I voted for Jamie Barron to get the All-Star over from last year in the team of the year. I think William O'Donoghue, deservedly so, no matter what happens mm. this weekend, will get his All-Star because he's been absolutely outstanding. But I don't see Limerick changing a whole lot. Of course, they will go short and they will probably... <clears throat> overload maybe the left side where Barry Nash is extremely strong on distributing the ball out and they can create the overlap and get it to Kyle Hayes and when Kyle Hayes gets the ball 50, 60 yards out from his own goal we all know that's dangerous so I think Limerick will try to press those buttons and go down that route um, but I will say the one thing Cork have over Limerick slightly is pace and it's pace everywhere. It's not just Jack O'Connor. It's not just Robbie O'Flynn. It's Dara Fitzgibbon in the middle. It's Luke Mead. It's 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 Kingston. A, a wing back or a corner back is Tim O'Mahony. Those lunging runs. It's the one thing. And Limerick possibly, if they were playing Kilkenny or Galway or Tip, wouldn't be exposed to this level of pace, movement and speed. Shane Kingston, Alan Cat. It's just everywhere. So it's, it's an area that Cork will look to expose. And as Brendan said, is will the Limerick half back line follow him and create those spaces like Kenny did? I wouldn't imagine they will, but it'll be fascinating to see if Cork can, Cork can get some joy in that area. And just before we head for predictions, lads, the Marty, the bench, I mean, both teams, would it be fair to say both teams would have, you know, reasonable strength and depth to bring mm -hmm. lads in, whether it be Pat Ryan, you know, yeah. um, you've got obviously... You know, you and you have the young lads, Cahill O'Neill and Coughlin, like, and then from a Cork perspective, with da you've the Damien Cahillans, whether or not Kingston makes it, Cadigan, you know, so and Barrett and Connolly. 
So there's 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 there's, there's, there's there's good options for both teams, isn't yeah. there? Yeah, and I, I just press count. I did the Leinster football final this year between Dublin and Kildare, and it was only when I was there, you know, preparing for it that you looked at the Dublin bench, and you, it wasn't as strong as it was in the past, and it was quite noticeable. You look at these two teams, and you think they have plenty to choose from. Mm. I mean, do you start Shane Kingston after scoring seven points? Do you start Alan Callaghan? Do you bring him on? Um, these are going to be difficult decisions, and um, it's it's hard to know. I, I certainly think Shane Kingston laid down a marker, but it is it is a cliche. There is a twenty six man game anymore, and and bringing on you want to to finish. I think the general philosophy is you want to finish, particularly a team like Cork. You want to finish with your strongest fifteen on the field, if at all possible. So it could well be that Shane Kingston would find himself on the sub bench again and bring brought on. And the same with Alan Cunningham, but what a difference they would make. I think, I think it's the subs and their impact will, will actually win this All Ireland. Mm -hmm. And Limerick have it, they have the players. But you just sense the Cork, if they do hold Cadigan and Kingston back, they could well be the match winners in this All Ireland final. Uh, just before we get on to final predictions, so just one final <clears> thing, and I just mentioned this to Marty before we started recording, was this is Marty's fifth TV commentary, um, All-Ireland final TV commentary, uh, 17, 18, 19, and 20, 21. And in the five years he's done it, it's been a different pairing each time. So Watford, Galway in 17, Limerick, Galway 18, Tip Kilkenny 19, Limerick, Watford last year, and Cork, Limerick this year. Is this a is this a golden age for hurling, uh, Brendan? Yeah, I think it is. I mean, if you if you, there's no doubt based on that <coughs> change that we've seen um, over the over that period of time, the game has evolved obviously with what Limerick are doing and all. But others are catching up and they're catching up quickly. You look at Cork a couple of years ago; everyone was saying, "Oh, I don't know where Cork hurling is. Tis tis in the tis in trouble. Tis this, tis that." Now Cork and are in a final, and suddenly they're the model for all underage hurling. Yeah. That we should all be playing the way Cork are underage. So I mean, it's just the way it's the way it is. But it is certainly very very healthy. And when we get back, and we've had. We've had our lockdowns and all that kind of stuff, and we've had a change. When Robin comes back, it's going to be fantastic. Yeah. Isn't it's it? going to be. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's yeah. when the turbo hits on on this yeah. thing as well. You know, every game is a, it's a Champions League game. We'll call it. So yeah, it is. Hurland's in a really, really good place at the moment. There's no doubt about that. Would you agree, Jack? Yeah, absolutely. It reminds you of kind of the '90s when yeah. you often come to the four Wexford and what a time to be alive that was. Mm. Uh, you know, the traditional counties weren't featuring as much, and the variety, the the different game plans. You know, the spectacles that we're being treated to and the round robin, as you say, coming back into uh, next year will be brilliant. So it's just, we just need to enjoy it for, for, for what it is and uh, long may it continue. Uh, so predictions time. Uh, let's go with the Kilkenny vote first. Where, how, are you, how are you thinking? What, are you, what way are you leaning towards, Jackie? Yeah, I suppose when, when Cork did beat Kilkenny, I had the view of, I, I, I still think Limerick are the All-Ireland champions. But as time has moved along, I see the gap closing and I, there's a lot to like about this Cork team. There really is, but I, I still hold me. <coughs> Limerick, I just feel this Limerick team, as I say, they, they are very, very confident. They know what they're about and their backs, they just, their distribution, they don't hit balls like Kenny did in the second half, 50, 50 long range balls. They'll hold on to that ball. They'll work it that the 70, 30 is in favour of Limerick, the 80, 20 ball in. And this Limerick team, I expect him to get over the line. Sorry to be the bearer of bad news here, Rory. No, oh, no problem. Brendan, would you go along with that? Yeah, um, uh, I would, yeah. I would. I just think from from minute one to 75, Limerick constantly puts you under pressure. They learned a huge lesson from 2019 when Kilkenny beat him. <laughs> and I think they're still using that as motivation to drive themselves forward, to say, look, we have a golden generation of players here. Ideally, we should be going for to, to get our fourth, our, our fourth All-Ireland rather than our third. Um, and I think the process that they have is, um, I won't say bulletproof, but they all buy into it so much that even if you put them under pressure, They'll just fall back on the system. They'll work hard on the Tipperary game. I think they were concerned about their tackle count more than anything else in the first half. They upped the work rate in the second half. Process started going and they took Tip apart. So I think overall with the calmness that they have, Cork will give them pucks of it. There's no doubt about that. But I just think that the belief and, and the structure that they have will get them across the line. And Marty, uh, 10 past five on Sunday, you will be in full flow. So is it going to be 
it'll be history either way. So mm. it'll, it'll, it'll either be the end of a 16 year famine or it'll be back to back titles for Limerick for the first time. Ooh, what do you predict you will be commentating on? Well, um, talk about playing to the crowd. I, I was born in Mallow, County Cork. I just want to put that out there. You know what I mean? Uh, and we've way more Cork. We've way more Cork listeners, Marty. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, you know, you, you, it is interesting the word you used as a Cork man, because that's exactly what Kieran Kingston used in an interview with me. This has been a famine. It's 16 years. And well I think they're highly motivated. And I think between underage, uh, the, under, the minors, the, the under 20s, and now the seniors, I think Cork are coming and I think Cork will win in All-Ireland. I just think this might be a, de- a step too far. I think Limerick have the overall balance. They're strong everywhere. Even the four of us can't really decide who's going to mark Keane Lynch, for instance. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and mm-hmm. uh, so if we're having a problem, not uh, we have All-Ireland medalists with us, it is going to be difficult. So the overall balance, I think it'll be a, a good game. I think it'll be an exciting game. And I'm not playing politics here. Don't be surprised if Cork produced the shock of the year, because I think it would be, because I, I think everybody has Limerick written on the Liam McCarthy Cup. And the fact, and there's only a small point, the 1930s, Limerick won four Munster titles in a row, but never put back-to-back All-Irelands. This is the time of Mackey. And this Limerick team have won three Munster titles in a row, and they're very determined to win two All-Irelands back-to-back. And of course, there's the whole historical thing of 1921, the Liam McCarthy Cup, Limerick being presented with it first. Not that that is in there, is in within the camp, but within Limerick there is that momentum. So it's a long-winded way to say that I think Limerick will win with about two points to spare. Uh, listen, we can't wait. Well, well, I can wait actually because the next couple of days are going to be tough. You know, uh, we will be on edge, right? So if we I'm will. a bit narky, if I'm a bit narky on the phone, you know, <laughs> no, what'll be funny, lads, is that when I say that. That is a, is a very dirty tackle. That should be a red card for Cork. Your off. man will be in my ear. You're totally wrong, Martin. You can't say that. Yeah. Uh, listen, we're really looking forward to it. And we're coming on on Sunday. It's going to be a mega mm-hmm. build-up. We're coming on at two o'clock on Sunday um, um, for a 90-minute build-up. Obviously, the match is run in at half three. Team parades are back, lads. Delighted for that. Great. Great. Fantastic. We're really yeah. looking forward to that. It's such a <clears> special <throat> tradition. And I think yeah. it's great to have that back. And uh, can't really wait for the ball to be thrown in at half three. RT2 from two o'clock on Sunday. Everybody then is going to be back on Sunday night, team of the year on the Sunday game. And so much to look forward to. We'll be like the kid at Christmas and we're all looking forward to it. Listen, lads, thanks very much for joining Cheers. me this morning. Yeah, and Rory, just before, just before yeah. you go, Rory, I mean, I just want to clarify for the 6 1 news. Jackie Terrell is a contender for the Tipperary manager's job. Is that true? <laughs> no comment at this moment, Mary. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, guys. Thanks a million. Take care, lads. Slide. Bye. Bye. Possession crucial from this. How much longer will the referee allow? Dublin lead by a point. And there's the whistle. It's over. It's over. We earned it by winning the last two matches on the road, and that's not going to be taken away from us. But what I love in Hurland, I love players that will never give in. He hits it. He hits it. It's over the bar. Oh, holy fuck.